Hi, Gordon here with another edition of the Unscripted series. Been off the air for a while, and it's because we've just had an incredi incredible busy and uh, tumultuous beginning of 2017, with the main event being my parents, who are 84 and 94, deciding to move out of their home and into assisted living. And uh, both Shar and I have just been working our tails off to help them with that move in their transition. But the upside of it is that I had given them my first two instruments ever, and so I've got those back, and that's the subject of, of this week's Unscripted. Actually, the, the instrument number one is a subject, and uh, another time, maybe next week, I'll do my first guitar. But these are, are three pretty important instruments uh, in the history of my MOA. Long before there was a twinkle of my MOA in my eye, uh, but looking back, they were the beginning. This one, because it was the first guitar I ever owned, uh, back when I wanted to learn to play guitar, and I bought that. It's a Weber guitar from Vancouver, Canada, and I love it. Uh, it's curly maple, fiddleback maple. And, uh, you know, I bought this, and then I bought another one of his, and decided that if I were going to keep doing that, I would have to unretire. And so I decided to learn how to make guitars. And then I'm going to jump to this, this guitar over here. This is, uh, this is the fifth instrument that I made, and uh, uh, fifth instrument and fourth guitar, I guess. And, you know, thus began one of my fascinations with Koa. So it's a, uh, an OM guitar, small body guitar, and uh, uh, with a, an amazing kind of curly Koa. Zoe, it's okay. Curly Koa uh, back and sides. But this is really the instrument that, from a building perspective, started it all. Um, after I had bought those two Webers and decided I wanted to learn how to make guitars, I thought I was just daunted by the idea of making a guitar right from the start. So I started with this mountain dulcimer. And the cool thing about a dulcimer, I mean, other than it's a really neat instrument, I think, uh, from a building perspective, the cooling, cool thing about it is you don't have to worry about your body design and your bracing of the body in particular and whether or not the string tension is going to you know, cause the body to fold up like a clamshell because it's got this big, thick, uh, you know, neck fretboard all the way down to the, the saddle that takes all of the string tension. And so from a structural standpoint, the body's not doing much. But uh, this is beautiful piece of, of curly maple there with a uh, curly maple kind of neck and ebony fretboard and uh, then I carved the, the head stock. I didn't really know what I was doing. I'm, I'm not even really sure what that was supposed to be. But it's symmetrical and kind of pretty. And uh, actually, I'm pretty proud of that instrument. Like when I look at it now and look at the construction of it, um, you know, I would, I'd be fine shipping that to an owner. So I always expect that I could look back and think, oh, man, my first instruments were terrible. But I'd built furniture for a while. So it's... Uh, you know, it's, it's not terrible. Anyway, after doing the dulcimer, then I went on to guitars. And um, uh, so this is instrument number one. It's not on Uke Tracker because we didn't have Uke Tracker on a website then. And uh, so you can't go look it up anywhere. And as you may know, I built, I think I built 17 instruments before the first ukulele. So the first ukulele is number 18. But I ended up with 23 in total non-ukuleles. So... That's a little bit of a guide to our serial number system. Anyway, thought you would enjoy seeing that, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.